Breaking news, first at four, the man accused of running down a Detroit police officer is in court, and one mystery in this case has been solved. Also, a mother on the witness stand, what she's saying about her ex-husband, who's accused of leaving their son in a hot car to die. Paula? Hi, Devin. The Democrats' rollout shared a campaign for Hillary Clinton. She'll be preaching to the converted in Flint, but can she really convert anyone under the age of, say, 35? Ben? Paula, no tricks, all treats, at least from our side of the studio. We'll see what these clouds are going to do for Halloween right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. We're following breaking news this afternoon. The man accused of running down a Detroit police officer over the weekend has just been charged with murder. 54-year-old Stephen Guzina of Lincoln was arraigned this afternoon on second-degree murder, drunk driving, and other charges. Prosecutors say Guzina was driving a van that struck and killed Officer Myron Jarrett. This was Friday night while the officer was working a traffic accident on Detroit's west side. Guzina in jail right now, no bond. Meantime, police have found a woman believed to be a witness to the crash, and they were looking for her over the weekend. She now has been interviewed, we understand, as the investigation continues. First at four, presidential politics in Michigan that feel more like a celebrity showdown. The reality TV star turned presidential candidate. Hillary wants to blame everyone else for her mounting legal troubles, but she has brought all of this on herself. Versus the pop superstar hoping to give Hillary Clinton a boost. All this one week before the election. 2016 presidential race has been anything but routine, and today a rather surprising combination perhaps as Michigan is getting a one-two punch of star power. Paula Tutman is in Flint waiting for the arrival of the one and only Cher, but first Mara McDonald in Warren for the latest visit from Donald Trump. Mara. Good evening or afternoon to you, Devin. Take a look behind me. You can see we're on the campus of Macomb Community College and it is utterly jammed in here. We have a crowd of several thousand. They actually had to close the doors earlier on about three to 400 people who wanted to get in here, but the venue is jammed. Now Trump's event in Grand Rapids ran late, which is why this is not starting on time. They've already gone through their opening program, but we see some of the National Traveling Press Corps rolling in here, which means that the candidate cannot be hard, far behind. So we're anticipating he gets in here and starts talking in the next 20 minutes or so. And when that happens, of course, we will come back to you. We are live in Warren right now on the campus of Macomb Community College. I'm Mara McDonald. Back to you. All right, Mara. So let's move now up to Flint, where Paula Tubman waiting for Cher to arrive. Uh, Paula, some people might be surprised to find Cher getting political here in Michigan, but she has been uh, very vocal about the water crisis in Flint. She's been very, very vocal. In fact, donated something in the order of 180,000 bottles of water. Did lots of angry tweeting about this. She's going to be here at this union hall in Flint. Far cry from the Vegas digs she's accustomed to. Very austere inside. But they're hoping to have a rollicking crowd. But here's the thing. She'll be preaching to the converted. The question is, can she convert others? Unless you live in Flint... The story of the water crisis may not necessarily top your newscast any longer. But when you live in Flint, you know that the homemade signs for freshwater giveaways have given way to permanent signs. That drinking water stations are still very much a necessity. How many more we need? Two more. And consider this. Every single one of these water station workers was out of work a minimum of two years before they landed a spot giving away clean drinking water. It is the crisis that employs them. And that is a juxtaposition that is hard to fathom when you're living it, like Robert Allen, who is living it. They've always tried to cut the balance of the budget on the back of the poor. It ain't going, it's going to always happen. But we that are voters, we can't complain if we don't go vote. We gonna sit there and talk, but we need to go vote. Cher has been extremely outspoken when it comes to Flint and its water crisis, even donating fresh water. Today, she actually comes to Flint to campaign for Hillary Clinton. Pat Osborne is excited to see her. See if she still looks as good as she used to look. However, when she asked her daughter to join her. I said, I'm going to go see Cher. And she said, who? You have to have some younger people that are as, as, as funny as it seems, somebody like Beyonce, 
Rihanna, I think that would get them. And even if they do it on social media, that's what they're all looking for. Pat says her daughter is not excited about voting and she'll drag her to the polls anyway, kicking and screaming if she has to. You know, you don't have to look far to find young people who are apathetic about both candidates, like Sarah, who says Cher won't get her to the polls either. I don't think either candidate is good for what we need right now. Um, I think either way, the outcome isn't going to be the best we could hope for. You know, here's the good news about Sarah, though. She says she's undecided. She may not know until she pulls the lever, but she says at least she is going to vote. But, Devin, here's the important thing. She also called me ma'am, and that means she's of a certain age. And she also said Cher, she's not sure Cher can even speak to her. She's looking for others, including her own heart. Devin? Wow, interesting. And it really is a big part of this. How uh, engaged are the millennials to get out and vote next week? All right, Paula, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to download uh, the Click on Detroit app for election night. You'll get push alerts on all the results from uh, the per presidential race, of course, but also all of your local numbers as well. Download it in your app store. Well, the people who work at the Glass House were told to go home today after a fire at Ford World Headquarters in Dearborn. It forced a full evacuation of the building. A fire in an electrical substation in the basement uh, prompted the evacuation. This was about 9 o'clock this morning. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Fire was quickly put out, but power was cut to the building as a precaution. And the 1,500 people who work there were told to go home around noon. A little early vacation on Halloween and today's first forecast critical for all the trick-or-treaters heading out this afternoon and tonight. Let's get to Ben and find out what's in store. Ben? Yeah, all those guys can go home and uh, hand out those Snickers a little bit early, but uh, I'll tell you, we've got the clouds out there. It hasn't looked like the nicest day, but temperature-wise, this time in October, uh, not too shabby, especially considering that the winds are not all that brisk, about 10 miles an hour. I think we're going to stay in the low 50s at least to start trick or treating. But by the end uh, of everything, when we get closer to eight, nine o'clock, that's when those temperatures drop into the mid 40s. So a little on the crisp side, but not too bad. Remember sunset tonight, 628 and with the clouds around, it's going to get dark pretty quick as uh, we head towards the uh, seven o'clock hour. We'll look at some incredibly warm temperatures in your four zone forecast that are coming up in just 24 hours. Devin. All right, Ben. First at four, we are following a number of stories making headlines around the world. And in this roundup, we'll start with another earthquake in central Italy, the third in just two months. This video gives pretty good perspective on how several historic buildings are now destroyed. This latest quake was just yesterday. No reports of death or injury in yet. However, two churches had managed to survive the earlier quakes no longer, and they dated back to the 14th and 15th centuries. Some ancient walls and towers that date back to the Roman Empire were also destroyed. In Georgia, the mother of a little boy who died in a hot car took the stand today and seemed to defend her ex-husband who's been charged in the death of their son. Ross Harris is on, the tri is on trial for the death of his 22-month-old son. Prosecutors say Harris killed his son Cooper in order to have a life free of family obligations. But Harris contends it was just a mistake. And today, his ex-wife seemed to agree with his version. He was a very involved dad. Um, he, it was 50-50, everything was split down the middle. He wanted to be the one to push him in the swing. He wanted to be the one to slide down the slide with him. Taylor testified that while her ex-husband may not have been the best husband, she says he was a loving and attentive dad. Ahead tonight, first at four, Angels Night success, a safety update from the city of Detroit and the restrictions that are still in effect as we head into tonight. Kim? Well, it may not look like much now. No, that's okay, buddy. But these local police officers are participating in Movember. But this year, they've challenged another local police department to see who can grow it better. All right, Kim, but first, she's known as the woman who angrily kicked a birthday cake, but her legal troubles didn't end there. Why she was in court today and the punishment from the judge, all next on First at Four. Coming up all new on Local 4 News at 5 and 6. Today it's a big party at a plumbing store. Why, you ask? That's a fair question. I'll explain. Coming up. All right, Steve. Cake, ice cream, and anger brought this woman to a courtroom in Royal Oak today. 46-year-old Trisha Cordes pleaded no contest to assault charges stemming from a recorded incident at an ice cream shop. The video showed her striking an employee 
because the shop had run out of the flavor she wanted. Earlier this year, you'll recall Cordes was ordered to perform community service for kicking a special order cake inside a Kroger store. Today, the judge sentenced her to two years of probation for the ice cream incident. Angels Night effort in Detroit continues tonight and thus far doing a pretty good job of protecting people and property. The city says all those volunteers have done a great job. Firefighters responded to 26 fires in the 24 hours that ended at midnight last night. So that means the city is on track for the second lowest number of fires on record. Let's hope that continues tonight. There is no Angels Night curfew, but the standard city curfew is in effect. That means anyone 17 years of age or younger needs to be with a responsible adult who is at least 18 years old. Restrictions, by the way, on buying gasoline in portage containers, portable containers, that remains in effect until midnight. So after a pretty cool day yesterday, a little bit better today, um, so we've got a, hopefully, looks like most of the costumes can remain in play for oh, the yeah. night, right? I, and you're going to get quite a haul of candy because you're going to be out <laughs> yeah. there most of the night tonight. Uh, Weather-wise, no problems from us. Uh, in fact, we're awfully close to average for this time of year. Temperatures right now low 50s, and this is without the sunshine. If we had gotten some sun in here today, we probably would have been on our way to 60 degrees. Now, we still may get a few breaks in the clouds before the sun actually sets. Uh, just don't bank on a whole lot of it. As you can see across the state, we're pretty much socked in uh, with mid-level clouds across all of the state of Michigan. There are some showers that are showing up on radar. Those are out over the lake and should stay north of us as uh, we get through tonight. So we're looking at dry conditions, pretty close to average for temperatures. And I don't think that those numbers are going to fall all that much tonight because just as we start getting into what would typically be our coldest part of the night uh, past 12 o'clock, we're going to start to get some warm air in here in advance of a very nice afternoon tomorrow. And that's going to hold temperatures relatively steady going into the overnight hours. So we may get a couple breaks, but the clouds do come back overnight. And tomorrow we're going to see plenty of those clouds as well. Midweek gets a little wet. Uh, showers start rolling in here on Wednesday. They'll be out of here by early Thursday morning. In fact, I think a lot of us are going to start the day dry on Thursday, save for maybe just a sliver of our south zone uh, south of the city on Thursday morning. And beyond that, more of a typical October, but let's focus on the good stuff here in the short term. Tonight, the overnight low 44, but remember trick or treating temperatures will start out in the 50s before they drop into the 40s. Just about sunset tonight. So let's look at your four zone for temperatures tomorrow. And remember, average highs this time of year are in the mid 50s. These numbers almost 20 degrees warmer than average as we get into tomorrow afternoon. 74, Detroit, Dearborn, Romulus, you'll likely be at that number as well. If we get a little bit more sunshine down here in our south zone, these numbers could start looking like 78 in a couple locations, but we're forecasting a little conservatively here, mid 60s across most of Lenaway and Monroe County. West zone, slightly cooler, low 70s, maybe down here to 74, uh, all the way down to Ann Arbor. And in our north zone, there will be some 60s here, mainly closer to Lake Huron, but good portion of the inland area of our north zone will get into the 70s tomorrow. Now, that's it. As far as exceptionally warm temperatures, we'll start seeing those numbers go down as we get through your seven day forecast. And it starts resembling a more typical October as we head into the weekend. Don't forget to set your clocks back. Fall back Saturday night before you head to bed. Daylight saving time ends 2 a.m. on Sunday morning. Already there, Devin. Right. All right, Ben. Men's health is the focus of the Movember movement, and that means uh, many of the men you know and love might start looking a little scruffy starting tomorrow. As our Kim DeGiulio shows us, uh, growing facial hair has become a competition for some local police officers. From Henrik Zetterberg to Justin Verlander to the most extreme, DeAndre Levy, we've seen our fair share of great facial hair here in Detroit. But now Ferndale police officers are jumping on board to this trend as they participate in Movember, which means no shaving all month to raise awareness and money for cancer. Some of our guys are going to go wild. You know, they are, like I said, they can grow a beard by just, you know, concentrating. This is the second year that they'll be doing Movember, and last year it was pretty entertaining for the female staff to watch. I look at some of them and I think, okay, you should just clean it up just a little bit you know, by mid-November. But trimming is not allowed. If you do trim your beard in any way, you have to put $10 back to the charities. And that's on top of the $25 they've already paid to the Movember charity to participate. 
And this year, the Ferndale Police Department has invited the Hazel Park Police Department to join in on the fun, and they're adding some friendly competition to the cause. We're going to evaluate the best and the worst beards for each department. Ferndale Police hopes that the trend catches on, so there can be more involvement in the years to come. We're going to open it up wider and see if we can't get a whole south, the whole southeast Oakland County involved, and and. Um, you know, be able to raise some serious cash for, for the cause. So ladies, this November, get ready for the scruff, but more importantly, men, get ready to raise awareness about cancer this November. Reporting in Ferndale, I'm Kim DeGiulio, Local 4. All right, Kim, still ahead, a confrontation over a dog caught on tape. It is going viral. We'll have a look at why some people are defending a man and his pit bull. But up first, this guy apparently thought sneaking into a panda cage sounded like a good idea, a decision he regretted. More of the video coming up in a minute. But first, as we head to break, here's a look at how the markets have closed today, a down day on all the markets, but just slightly. Back with more in a minute. It's Fox Tour. Time now for a look at today's top trending stories. This video is quickly going viral. It shows a man wrestling with a panda after he snuck into this enclosure at a zoo in China. The man's making his way over to the through the zoo's panda area, walks over to this sleeping panda. Never mess with a sleeping panda. When the man moves closer, the animal wakes up and grabs his legs, and that's when amusement turned into panic. The man ended up wrestling with the panda in order to free himself. He broke free, then ran off. In the end, fortunately, no one was injured. At what point was that a good idea? Was never a good idea, Ben. He was with two uh, young ladies and was oh. trying to impress them by doing that. It was either that or liquid courage was my other. It, it, well, both of them were pandemonium, <laughs> if you will. Uh, sorry about That's that. That's good. I, I, they'll, they'll never have me back after that. Another video making the rounds comes from San Francisco. Not easy to see here, but the video shows a police officer pulling a man off a cable car. Police were concerned because he had a pit bull with him. Well, some witnesses, including the woman who posted the video, claimed the dog was a service animal. San Francisco Transit says they're looking into the incident. They're trying to confirm that the dog was truly a service animal because uh, regular dogs are allowed on cable cars, but they have to be on a leash and muzzled. This dog was neither. We typically don't hear of uh, pit bulls being service dogs, but that doesn't mean one isn't necessarily. Uh, jilted brides are one of the hot topics on Inside Edition today. What happens after they're left at the altar? Deborah Norville recently gave us a preview and says it's actually a story about hope. You will watch this interview with these three women and as those smiles tell you, you will have confidence that this too shall pass. There is a reason for what happened. You are going to be better for it. And that is the message of these three ladies when we hear from them coming up on Inside Edition. Keep it right here on Local 4 for the story of the Jilted Brides. Inside Edition starts at 4.30 after this newscast. And Ben, your question was what? How often does that happen that How we're doing often? a story with multiple <laughs> Jilted Brides? Well, they had to wait until they found enough to do the story, but that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know. How far are people left at the altar? We'll find out. 4.30. Uh, still ahead, first at 4, a tribute to Willy Wonka. We'll show you Everard Ronda, the whole morning team, bringing life to the beloved movie this morning. Back in just a minute. Carmen. Yes, the queen is saying goodbye to the anchor desk after 38 years. So what better reason to grab a car and go for a ride through the city of Detroit, talking about her career and the town she loves so much. It makes me feel so good to see it come back. Out from behind the desk and behind the wheel. Go, 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 oh! go. Race this bus. Take this bus. You can take this bus, Carmen. Oh! See Carmen like you've never seen her before, tonight on Local 4 News at 11. You're still very concerned about these brides being left to the altar, aren't you? I can't wait to see what Deborah's going to say it happen. I know. I know. Uh, but finally here today, in case you missed it, the Local 4 News team today revealed their Halloween costumes this morning. Yep, and they celebrated a classic, as you see here in this video, the morning crew <laughs> dressed up as the characters from Willy Wonka. Believe it or not, this year marks the 45th anniversary of that movie. Now, we want you to vote on which costume you like the best. You can also check out the outtakes reel, which may be just as good as what they showed this morning. Uh, it's all on click on Detroit.com, and tomorrow we'll tell you which costume was voted the best.
pretty impressive. There's a lot of work that goes into this every year. I, I, this was great stuff. I mean, those were, those were good stuff. I liked it a lot. Thanks so much for being with us here at First at Four. Back here in a half hour with Local 40s at Five, Ben is waiting for Inside Edition, and it's next.